equally positive results. So if there's a shoe that performs well on the, on the ramp, it's tended to perform well in the workplace and it's helped prevent a lot of slip accidents. People who have uh, issued the footwear on the basis of ramp test results have seen a reduction in incidents, time off work, civil claims, you name it. And actually there's huge cost savings if you get it right. Uh, one of the national supermarkets recently made a capital investment of £600,000 in safety footwear and within the first 12 months they estimated it saved them a million pounds in claims alone. Uh, so by getting it right it can really make a big difference not just to your staff's well-being and safety but also to your bottom line as well. Um, so that's why we think it's important to do the additional testing. So this is uh, the test that we're now moving towards. The ramp test, albeit very good, it's very expensive to undertake because it, it involves working at height and obviously us being HSC, there's lots of safety considerations to take into account. We have to regularly inspect our equipment, etc. So there's lots of costs associated with it. It's also at least a two-man job, often a three-man job, where this, as you can see, is quite a simple test. And unlike the ramp test, it's sort of piece of kit that a manufacturer can have at the end of their production line to do their own development work and also uh, quality control uh, certification. So we're hoping that this test will allow the industry to move forward and start making better shoes. And we're hoping the grip rating scheme, which we're going to be using the test for, is going to be much like the Euro NCAP was for car safety, where you know it's going to raise standards in the industry. So it could be a very important piece of kit. So the kit, the, the new test that we've developed has been de developed in collaboration with the University of Sheffield. And it's actually the product of about 10 years of work. Uh, so I feel like I'm not doing it justice by my unveiling. It should probably have a smoke machine and strobe lights or something. But, uh, but yeah, it, there's a lot of work gone into it. And the reason why it's taken so long is because we've tried to recreate the dynamics of pedestrian walking. So the heel distance from the surface is set to recreate typical walking gait. Obviously we all have our own different walking gaits, but this is based on what is typical. The heel strike angle is also set uh, to replicate walking dynamics, as are the forces that it applies to the surface. So that's why we've done the test. So I'll do you a quick demonstration of it so you can see it in action. But the important thing about it all is that it's, as you're about to see, it's a very dynamic test. It introduces the shoe to the surface in a very dynamic way, much as we do when we walk. And that's distinctly different to the industry standard test. Uh, that is not as dynamic as this, and it allows contamination under the shoe to disperse, which helps the footwear, basically, grip to the surface. So it can be, as I say, quite a lenient test and also it has very low pass thresholds as well so it's very easy to pass because you need a very low value to pass it. You can pass this te the test even though the footwear still presents a very high slip risk. Um, this however would have a much more challenging test uh, as I'll explain to you shortly. So as I say I'll give you a quick demonstration of it. So there you are, it fires the shoe at the surface in this instance, I'm testing the floor surface dry, so there's no contaminant there. So we're not getting that squeeze film lubrication. So at this particular angle, it's passed the test. But I'll now just squeeze a bit of water onto the surface. And this is where the majority of accidents tend to happen, when the surface is contaminated. Now we have that layer of contamination on there and because we're introducing the shoe in a dynamic fashion we're getting that squeeze film lubrication which causes people to slip. So how we can differentiate between footwear is by we're utilising something that we all instinctively know. When we're on a slippery surface we always try to shorten our walking gait so we keep our centre of gravity close to vertical. I hope that, can you hear me alright? It's uh, reverberating a bit up here. But we try and keep our centre of gra gravity as close to vertical as possible, so we reduce our friction requirements. And that's kind of what we're doing here. We're doing the inverse of the ramp, really. Closer to the vertical, the less challenging it is to the footwear. But as we extend the angle out, it becomes more and more challenging. And based on the angle at which the footwear eventually slips at, uh, we can actually calculate a coefficient of friction and the slip risk associated with it. So as I say, we've tested this shoe and it's failed at this predefined angle. For simplicity purposes, we have predefined the angles, but we can kind of make this infinitely adjustable. The prototype was infinitely adjustable, you could just wind it out gradually. 
but for our grip rating scheme we've tried to simplify it in a stepwise approach. So we've tested this shoe and it's failed at the first angle. I'll just swap the footwear now and uh, see. you can see hopefully that no two shoes perform the same. I should also point out that the two shoes that we're demonstrating here are both SRC rated. The SRC rating comes from the industry standard test. So whenever you're buying footwear, you might have noticed that they're either SRA or SRC certified. Uh, there is actually an SRB certification as well, but generally if you achieve SRB, you've already achieved SRA. And if you achieve the both, that, uh, both SRA and SRB, uh, it qualifies you to claim SRC. So you only really see SRA and SRC. So I'll just do another SRC rated shoe now. Try and, I'll try and do it in here so you can see how we set it up. So we always set the shoes up in a very specific way. Again, so we have that uh, consistent interaction with the surface. So it's not a particularly helpful approach when you're doing a demonstration, but believe me, these intricacies make a difference to the results. And that's why we have to do it in a very specific way. So yeah, in a catalogue, these two shoes would be indistinguishable. Uh, they could both claim to be slip resistant because they've passed the test, and they could both claim to have the SRC uh, slip resistance rating because indeed that's what they've both achieved. But on our test, you can see that they perform very differently. So we'll do another test now with this shoe. Same angle as before, but this time no slip. We'll now make the test more challenging by changing the angle of force to the next step. So we're just moving, moving the force away from the vertical to make it more and more challenging to the shoe. And with every adjustment of the ram, we also need to adjust the heel, so again the strike angle and distance from the surface remains consistent. So we've now moved to a more challenging angle. And again, no slip. 